Hey y'all. Hey. We are going to take y'all around the farm again today. It's been a while since y'all seen everything. Yeah, check on all the animals. Yeah, We've I haven't seen them in a while. Two new calves. If we can find them, they like to hide. They're very good at hiding. But Francois and Mandy. So yes. we have a bull calf and a heifer calf. So that's good. So far, one on the beach. Very uh, excited for another heifer. These are going to be Angus, Tarantase Cross, because little yeah. Joe was the bull here. And we'll have Gertie and Clary do in the next couple of months. Well, Gertie's doing a couple weeks, and then Clary should be due within a couple months. Yep. And there'll be um, Angus crosses too. And then the rest of the Tarantase and hopefully Cookie are all bred by Rusty, who is a purebred Tarantase bull. And I think they're due starting mm -hmm. January or February. <laughs> we February. should start getting more cat. February, yeah, so March, next April. Year. Maybe into May even, so yeah. I can't remember. A cookie will but be, I think, in the May. I can't, no, no, she was, I can't remember. Anyway, we have all I've the got it all right written now. down. When That's we, when we saw the action happening, so. Yeah, got it but, all uh, written down on our dates, so. That's awesome, and um, see so you, our kittens are all running around, they're getting big. We had the four kittens and the mom and cat. Um, we kept them up and the neighbors took them to get them all fixed, and we, um, one of the kittens was kind of smaller than the rest, and when they took it, they said that that uh, she wasn't gaining weight, so they kept her and kept her, and she ended up having uh, some kind of infection that they could not clear up, and so we ended up losing the one kitten, yeah. which is a bummer. But we still have four, because we have three kittens and then the mama. Right. Um, and they're doing great. They're wild. I would show, they, they love the kids. Of course, you can just pick them up and carry them around, but they're doing really Super great. Super tame. So that's awesome. Except for the mommy. Yeah, the mama's not tame, but she's getting calmer, like she'll, come near us now and not be yeah. like freaking out so that's but good she's I think a great barn cat she is she's a good you couldn't ask for a better uh, barn cat so right. that's what they're here for to catch any critters that we don't want around and uh so that's good and then on uh, another note that's not so pleasant our um we lost our mama pig penelope penelope uh we best we can tell she twisted her gut so um it's disappointing. She was really, really good mama pig, especially her first litter and the way she was with them. Luckily, or thank God, that the um, piglets were all old enough to be weaned. So they're all fine. Yeah. They're all in with the big pigs now, so everything's together. And except for the boar. Mr. Except for the boar, Mr. Yeah. Pig. Mr. Pig. He's by separate. Himself. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, you know, other than losing her, everybody's doing great. So well, that we was planned to keep a sow, one of her sows, or female pigs, to, uh, I guess that'd be the guilt, right? Yeah, right now it's a guilt. It's a guilt. We're gonna keep one of the gilts out of her to uh, be a sow with the hopes that she will have the same maternal instincts as Penelope. And, uh, oh. Did you sneeze? Hairball? Hairball kitty kitty? <laughs> I like kitty. Yes, you do. Um, but yeah, and then we have the, you say, with the red sow that uh, came with the piglet when we bought them. We're gonna probably keep her, which she should be. She should be bred, so hopefully. Yep. Yep. So anyway, that's kind of what, I think that's all the major updates for the animals. I'm sorry that I can't remember right now. I think so. We butchered chickens, which I, you saw that video. It wasn't a detailed video. It was just the uh, the process sped up. So Just the work. Um, that was just the other day. And um, and we got bees, which again, you will you will have seen that video by now. So <laughs> We'll tell them where we went and got feed later too when we're feeding oh, the yeah. bees. Oh yeah, feeding, that's another major. talking about that. Hey, let's show them our feed, our, um, our feed house. Oh yeah. So we actually can tell them about that. So, our feed house, feed room, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, one of my mowing customers <clears throat> had this building that she needed, wanted to be gone. She said, well, you can have it if you can get it to your house. And I Where said, there's a will, there's a way. Done deal. <laughs> so Jack and I took the tractor and the flatbed there and uh, loaded this building onto our trailer. And backed the tractor in on the back. It was quite the load coming down the road. It was, wasn't a lot of weight, but it was just a funny looking load. So anyway, uh, um, a little cumbersome. <laughs> it was very cumbersome, yeah. So, but this is a very nice dry place to store our feed, where the chickens and the cats and everything. Any rodents? Yeah, I mean a mouse could probably squeeze through, maybe. But we haven't had any issues yet. For sure, rats can't squeeze through this. Y'all back up so everybody can see. Yep. And uh, so, anyway, I don't know what it looks like in here because I haven't been in here yet today. Because it seems to be different every day. <laughs> We've been storing, like in here, our potting stuff, our, our plant potting stuff, which tomorrow we're starting some more seeds, uh, pots, our organic fertilizer, which we never tried before, which seemed to work well this year. Yeah, the tomatoes. And uh, cattle minerals are in here. All of our feed. Look. 
Tucker milling feed. Can you see that, Jack? That's we when we lived in Florida. That's what we would use. That's what we were we feeding. Like it a lot. It's non-GMO, soy-free, corn and corn-free. Sunflower. It's black sunflower base. Yes. So it is a very high-quality feed. And uh, some friends of ours in Knoxville. Highway Homestead. Yep, Highway Homestead. Courtney and Sam. They feed this. Go check out. They have a YouTube channel. Yes. What is it? Highway Homestead. Yes, Highway Homestead. I'll link them below. Yes. Funny story about when we first met Courtney um, in North Carolina at a homesteader's meet and greet. Yeah. And uh, She has a very, it. very sweet Southern Belle accent. Yeah. And she was saying Highway Homestead, but we thought she was saying Howie. How we homestead. How we homestead. So we thought she was saying how we homestead. Was I was what, searching and searching yeah. on YouTube. I'm like, I can't find you. Anyway, so it was it's high highway, highway homestead, homestead because their their homestead is just off of the highway. Yeah. So that was really funny. It was funny. But um Love you, Courtney. <laughs> yes. Anyway, they're feeding this and having much better success with finish weights with their meat birds. Like their finish weights are nearly three pounds more per bird than ours yeah so i called around knoxville is what about a three and a three hour almost four hour drive from here yeah well three and a half -ish. yes three and a half ish four hours yeah, something like that. depending on traffic the feed yeah. is four dollars less a bag than what we've been well, between four and five all right camera battery died yay but um <laughs> i don't even remember where i was at we're driving oh knoxville is about four hour drive three and a half to four hours um we were driving to our other feed mill, which was about two and a half hours round trip, maybe three. Three hours, hour and a half. About a three hour round trip. Um, several times several a month. Several times a month. Probably three to four times a month we were making the drive. Yeah. You know, so that. basically the driving time is a wash. If anything, it saves some time. If you can buy in bulk. And so what right. we did, because um, we didn't have the, you know, we don't... We can't, the reason we're buy, going several times a month is because we can't go buy in bulk like we need to. You know, right. we can buy a ton at one time. Yeah. Um, literally a ton at one time. And so, we, pounds, yeah, actually. we sold our <clears throat> meat chickens and we had taken deposits on them and then everybody paid the balance after we butchered. Mm -hmm. And so we got enough um, out of, when we had that idea, well, when everybody pays this for the meat chicks, that will be enough money to invest in the feed for the next batch of meat chickens. Yeah. So that's what we did. We took the money and we made that drive and we bought, we ended up buying 2,300 pounds of feed mm -hmm. um, and uh, got the feed for the month. That's one trip. And so even though it was a full day, we took the day and we actually went and got the feed and then we went to Highway Homestead and they fed us and didn't get any f pictures or video or anything. So we were just hanging out having a nice time. We yeah. hung out way longer than we should have. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and then but it was fun. It was fun. It was a good day. It was. And then we drove home. So, um, that uh that was uh that's kind of where we're at with our feed that's what we're gonna do we're gonna finish the next batch of chickens in a few weeks and then i think we'll pretty much do the same thing for our yeah. last batch um possibly our last batch we might do more but we're gonna if, if we're making we'll money see. on them we're gonna do more and we um, have to have some for our freezer so far we don't have any yeah we have one <laughs> yeah. chicken in our freezer yeah. right now yeah we ate a couple and we have one so we had like yeah we didn't end up like four or five for our family and, uh, so, uh, are you getting those turkeys happy? Mm -hmm. The turkeys are cleaning up some feed that got spilled, so yep. I'm okay with that. But um, anyway, let's go feed the meat birds and we'll tell you what we're doing with the meat birds that is saving us a little bit of work on the back end here. Okay. So it's pretty... I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't start out doing this to, to mm -hmm. accomplish what it's accomplishing. It was just kind of a bonus and surprise. So, all right. All right, so Josiah and Jeremiah usually go to the creek and get the water while Jack is moving the water pans and the feed trough. I don't know if y'all have seen our feed troughs that we built. Uh, we just ripped a piece of, uh, I think it was six inch pipe. Yeah, I believe it's six Yeah, in half and uh, made two feed troughs out of it. We just stuck the halves on the uh, piece of board right here and marked it and then cut the the half moon out and then screwed that here and then sunk the pipe into that and screwed it down so <clears throat> watch your head Jacob <clears throat> works pretty good and then uh <clears throat> we've switched watering pans 
which we like a whole lot easier. We bought these at a local feed store, and uh, <clears throat> seems to work out a lot better than the automatic waters. But what I was going to tell you that saving us a bunch of time at the end of the day, we are soaking our feed, not really fermenting it because we're not soaking it long enough for it to ferment, but um, what it's accomplishing for us is for one, the, the wet feed is easier for the chickens to digest, so they use less energy di digesting and more energy to grow, but they're drinking like less than half the amount of water that they were drinking before so by soaking the feed they're eating the wet feed which is also hydrating them and is working out way better at the end of the day we're not even having to ever water them at the end of the day we check them but their waters are still over half full at the end of the day if there's a day we forget to soak feed and we have to have dry feed then by the end of the day their waters are dry and we have to rewater them so soaking the feed makes a big difference and I'm pretty sure it's way healthier for the birds that way. So, but as you can see, the birds are doing great. Both tractors full. I think we have somewhere around 91 or 92 birds down here now. Split up between the two tractors. This tractor is 12 foot by 12 foot. And this tractor is 10 foot by 10 foot. So that's what we're working with. And uh, it's working out really good doing is Jack dumps a little bit of feed in front of the chicken tractor and that gets all the chickens up here and gets their attention focused as you can see they're super excited for feed then he sits on the tractor bucket and he, if he's got his finger up then I keep moving if he puts his finger down then I stop and that keeps us from running over any birds that's our signaling system all I'm doing is watching Jack's finger and there's one batch moved and now we're going to go move the second tractor I'm not sure where the two mommy cows and their calves went. They were like right there when we were down here working on fence earlier. And uh, didn't have the camera with me, so I didn't get any footage. But they're probably somewhere up in the brush now in the shade nursing their calves or they put their calves down to bed for the day because that's what they do. So we'll have to get them in another video. Maybe we'll find them later on the day. All right, y'all. We found our two little calves. They're down here playing with each other. It's the evening now. <laughs> yes, it's the same day, but the evening. They're down here with Cookie and Clary because their mommies are over on the neighbor's property. I've got the gates open so the mamas and all the cows can come back and forth between the two properties, but... The mamas will bed them down and leave them over here. Yep, they, they know this property, so they keep them on this side, but... Look, one of them is down. That's probably Mandy, I would expect is laying down they're cute yep they are cute yep. there she's back up now that might be it's hard to tell from yeah here. i can't tell from here <laughs> they're just playing and head button what are they how old are they two weeks one's two weeks one's uh two and a half and a week and a half yeah two and a half weeks old Francois is two and a half weeks old and Mandy's a week and a half old. But well, there they are. The two little half Tarantays, half Angus calves. <laughs> but, um, but let me come over here, I'll show you. Jack just pours the feed into their feeders. As you can see, they just chow down on it. It doesn't all fit in the feeders, and that's okay. Chickens are used to eating off the ground. So they're eating off the ground right here and out of the feeder right there. But we try to keep as much in the feeder as we can. And then the boys, like I said, they refill the waters. And sometimes the waters will be yucky. 
we'll take them into the creek and the boys will get a handful of gravels like creek rock just a little <laughs> sand and stuff and scrub them with that and it does a really good job of cleaning out any chicken poop or anything that's in the water like they stay in oh, it. no. disgusting. they're like ducks <laughs> These but, birds are definitely different. They're definitely different than laying hens, but they yeah. have a purpose and <laughs> They have a purpose and the purpose is tastiness. Mm -hmm. They're really yummy. They are. We've smoked I actually a haven't few. been yeah, we smoked a few. They're really good. Delicious. I um haven't been down here in a couple weeks, so they're growing. They've grown they? a lot since yeah. the last of May. Much more success since switching feed with this batch and the last batch. Now part of that last batch was rain every day rain, pretty much and then the last batch also because we have had the losses in the beginning they were half of them were a week older than the other half yeah, so it made it a lot different weight wise than these birds a week is a huge difference yeah. so they were about a pound or so smaller the week, one batch than the others but, yep. but we yeah. actually had rain too it's been a drought we didn't have rain for like two weeks yep. and the temperatures we had a record we i think they beat the record it was like 22 or three days straight of over 90 degrees so which um, is hot for here it's hot for 90, here. 90s isn't rare here but it doesn't get in that hot Not for that stay. long like you might couple have days usually. yeah you'll have a couple days of heat but it was three weeks over three weeks of heat and then nearly no rain but a lot of humidity during that time so it's right. been a little bit it's been crazy but um we finally got rain which is great because everything needed our pastures are suffering um so they're we've greener actually, today. They're greener today because of the rain. We've actually fed some hay because already in the middle of the summer because yeah. of the. And we the don't drought. have that many cows now. No. We've sent over half of them back that we were not going to release. Yeah. So, but we were glad we had some rain. So yes, definitely. Good. Hopefully, we'll get back in a, you know, normal weather where we're having rain every few days, a little bit of rain, so we can keep everything watered and growing good. But. What do you think, Jack? That one's almost four pounds. Okay. Jack's pretty good at uh, weight guesses on the meat chickens. So. Yeah, he's very good at it, actually. The weight anyway. guesses on about everything. Yep. Pigs, I usually beat them on. <laughs> yeah. Take the camera, Bob. Yes, sir. All right, so we told you we were going to show you everything, but I think this video has kind of gone on a little long since yeah. we talked about the feed. So we're going to wrap this up for today, but we'll catch you guys with everything we'll else on the yeah. animals. And then we should have another garden video up this week, too. So um hopefully like we're trying to get back in the swing of getting videos made on a regular basis um so hopefully life is calming down a little bit and we'll just try to get more videos out to you guys absolutely so.